Let's start where the bees start, with the first flower of spring, the pussy willow. The bees are out early in the springtime and early in the day, gathering pollen or nectar from whatever flowers appear. Now, you know, there are about 5,000 bees to a pound, and about six to eight or nine pounds in a hive. That means 30, 40, even 50,000 bees. And here's the brood chamber. The brood chamber is the lower part of the hive. The upper part of the hive is where the honey is stored. That's called the is super. There's a grill in between to keep the queen bee from uh, going up and laying eggs uh, in the uh, honey storage place. That would spoil the honey. You see, the queen bee is much larger than the workers, so all you have to do is put down a grill that will let the workers through and uh, keep the queen out and your honey is uh, pure. Now, bees are known as uh, industrious insects. We say uh, uh, as busy as a bee. Now, here's the head of a worker with the antennae. The antennae are very useful for detecting odors, and odors are very important in the life of a bee. And this is uh, the eye of a bee, very much magnified. It has two compound eyes with thousands of lenses in there. And it also has three simple eyes, by the way, and with all those five eyes, the bee can't close a single one of them. It has to sleep with its eyes open. And here are some of the brood cells. There's an egg. It looks like a little feathery plume, doesn't it? And this is a bee larva. When the egg hatches, that's how the uh, larva grows. And the larva lives for five days in a cell and then spins a cocoon for itself inside a cell, and then the cell is capped open. Twelve days or so later, the larva hatches into an adult bee. Here are some of the larva in the cell. There's the egg on the left and the larva on the right, and that growth takes place in five days. The larva is about 1,500 times as large as the egg, so you can see that a lot of feeding went on in that time. The nursery uh, attendants do the feeding. They sometimes feed a larva uh, 13 or 1400 times a day. Now there's a larva that's about to hatch. I mean, it has spun its cocoon and now it is uh, an adult bee and is working its way out into the body of the hive. If it can't get out by itself, some of the nursemaids come and help it. They clean it off and uh, show it uh, how to work around the hive. A young bee doesn't leave the hive for, oh, 10 days or two weeks after it comes out of the cell. It does domestic work, so to speak, including making wax, which is a hard job and one that uh, is delegated to the younger bees. A bee, uh, it takes bees, uh, oh, about six times as long to make a pound of wax as it does for them to make a pound of honey. Now there are street cleaners uh, in the hive, and here you see them uh, working at their jobs, cleaning out the hive. And here's a, here's a bee that's in the ventilating system. It's waving its wings at the door of the hive to create a, a breeze in the hive. Now it waves its wings about 200 times a second. And it, to cool the hive in summer, in winter, it will do waving of that kind inside the hive to develop heat, to keep the hive warm. Now here's a bee gathering pollen. Pollen is the dust that's on flowers, you know, and it packs it away uh, on its hind legs. Here's a hind leg with the pollen packed on it. it it's uh, like a basket of hairs there, and it's very ingenious. Now if you watch those bees going in there, you'll see, see that one going in? With its uh, hind legs packed with pollen. There goes another one. You can really see them if you stand near the entrance of a hive and watch the, the bees go in. Those that have the pollen will really stand out. Of course, going uh, from flower to flower covered with pollen in it, this way, the bees help to uh, fertilize our uh, blossoms, and so we get our fruits and berries. Bees are very useful to farmers. Now the lower part of brood chamber of the cell is a very busy place as uh, eggs are being laid by the queen. 
and the workers are rushing around. Here the professor is going to try a little stunt. That sugared water uh, there, and of course a bee will find it sooner or later, and the uh, sugared water is something they love. It saves them trouble in making honey. And the professor marked that bee with white on its back. Now we'll follow the bee to the hive. There it is, going right in the middle of the throng there. And it has found what it is the equivalent of a gold mine, a lot of sugared water. And it's rushing around now, very active, letting the other bees smell it. And its activity means, come on, boys, there's plenty more where this came from. Now, that's the way one bee tells another that it has come upon something good and that the other worker bees should rush out and find this source of supply. There's still our marked uh, bee. Now the other workers will go out and having that smell, there they go, having that smell fresh in mind, they will fly about until they come to this gold mine and here they've found it and are making profit there. The queen bee is the only one that lays eggs in this cell. Here are uh, workers uh, at another feast of sugared water, but there's an intruder, that uh, wasp there, is attempting to annoy the bees, but I'm afraid that wasp is going to get the worst of it. Yes, the bees are cooper cooperating and ganging up on it. Cooperation, by the way, is the secret of success of the hive. Well, here's cooperation of a, of a different kind. There seem to be a couple of ants that work on a bee there. Ants are among the worst enemies of bees. If they get into a hive, that hive is usually uh, doomed because the ants run all over it and destroy everything in there. Oh, the, here's a hive that is being invaded by ants, and it's, it's just too bad for that hive. a queen bee and it's laying an egg in a queen cell. As I say, the queen bee is the only one that does lay eggs. And she may lay a thousand or even fifteen hundred a day. Well, there's the egg laid in the queen cell. Now, you know, in Julius Caesar, Cassius says, upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed? Well, I know what the, uh, the queen larva feeds on. It is fed on a special jelly. Notice that queen cell is very much larger than any other cell in the hive. And when the uh, larva is hatched, it's just the same as any other larva, but then the workers feed it on what is known as royal jelly. And that's what makes this ordinary larva develop into the much larger queen and the only egg-laying machine in the hive. Now there's a young queen about to uh, gnaw its way out of the cell. And the first thing it will do will be to go looking for other queen cells and to puncture them so that it, the young queens won't come out. And if one has come out, these queens get into a fight because there can be only one queen to a hive. Now here are two young queens in a fight and it will be fatal to one of them. Queen has a sting but never uses it except in battle with another queen. Well, when queen cells appear, you know that it's time for the hive to swarm. It's getting overcrowded and there's plenty of honey. It's always in the uh, honey season and there's great activity. The bees raid their own honey stores and seem to get drunk on it. And then they rush out by the thousands and the old queen goes with them. And after buzzing and flying around, they alight on a branch of a tree or a post or someplace like that. Thousands and thousands of bees. They're very gentle. You can handle them even with your bare hands if you want. I have, I know. And you can saw off a branch or just brush them into a sheet and then you dump them into a, an empty hive and with a foundation of comb in there and with the queen with them, they will start in business again. They will build up a new hive. And uh, that's how uh, bees increase by making new hives. And here we have them started in a new hive and thus the life cycle of the bee begins again. <laughs>